Welcome back, everybody. This is On We Talk Retail. I'm Ann Mazinga. And I'm Chris Walton. And we are coming to you live from the Symbian On Talk booth here at Spartan Nash Food Solution Expo. Uh, standing between us, Chris and I have Lauren Foss, who is the VP of Strategy for CMI Orchards. Lauren, welcome to Omni Talk. Hey, thank you. Excited to be here. Yes. How's the show been going so far? It's been great. You yeah? know, it's been great so far. It's it's so fun to get out and spend time with our our friends at Spartan, and then also get to meet all of their independent retailers. So, um, it's my personal first time here. Um, so it's great to to put faces to names and Excellent. and see who we're selling fruit to. So. Excellent. So, Lauren, I got to imagine, I know I am, and I know probably our watchers are too. What is CMI Orchards? What is it? What does it do? And what's your role there? So, CMI Orchards is an apple, pear, and cherry shipper in Washington State. So, we represent roughly 15% of the state's apples and 15% of, uh, or really about 20% of both pears and cherries as well. So, we grow anywhere from basically the Oregon border all the way up to the Canadian border. Um, all through central Washington there. Do you have a favorite in each of those categories? <laughs> I do have a favorite. Okay, well, it. let's... I don't know it. if I could tell because I might make some people a little bit, you know, a little uneasy. No but one listens to this. It's totally right. funny. Uh, sugar bee is my favorite apple. I don't sugar, sugar bee? Sugar bee, yes. Okay. I don't know okay. if you've had that one. I have but not, but now okay. I'm going to Now to look list. for it. Okay. You should try it. Yes. Okay. Um, that is a, a Washington originated apple. So okay. uh, definitely take a look for that. Okay. Um, cherries, definitely a Skylar Ray. Skylar Ray. Yes. Wow. So that's it's another like, one of our sounds like an internet variation. influencer. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> uh, that one has a whole story in its own. Wow. So okay. We'll right. have to go take a look for that. That okay. is a it's a it's a yellow cherry, um, but very firm, very oh, large, yeah. very sweet. Um, again, and I came out of Washington. I may State have had well. that potentially. Okay. I just didn't know what it was called. I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. And pears? And pears. I'm going to go on, throw another one at you you probably haven't heard of. It's called a gem pear. Gem pear. Oh, gem no. pear. So that's right. a newer one that just came out. And, and you know, pears are finicky, right? Because yes. of course they are. They're kind of confusing as a, as a consumer. You got to, you know, Bartlett's, you got to wait till they break color to eat them. Anjos are not going to break color, but you just got to feel them for yeah. the right texture. Well, the gem kind of takes the confusion out of that. It eats right off the tree. You can eat it crispy and it's still sweet. Or it can ripen up and be soft like an Andrew pear and still taste great. Pear's so. a very underrated fruit, Anne, I think. It underrated. is. Oh, absolutely. I think it's high on the underrated scale of absolutely. fruits. Absolutely. Yeah. In, like, on its own and it, as an ingredient in things. Yeah. I feel like it is it is one of the best. It's, and now we're going to try this pear. Mm -hmm. Pear we're, varietal. Yeah. We're trying to make pear sexy again. <laughs> 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 I love it. Um, so you said this is your first time at the show. Um, anything that's been noteworthy while you've been here, or anything that you know you've checked off your list while you were you were here the last couple of days? I think the most impressive piece that I've noticed is uh, I got to go watch the auction today. So I was watching them auction off both meat and uh, various produce items. So that was pretty impressive to watch all of the independent retailers putting in orders on the spot. Oh, that's grow, what so. was happening. Huh? Yes. We heard it. That's what was going on. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of commotion going on. So they're that. buying products at this at this conference. Exactly. Wow. So the more Auction volume style. that the whole retailer base accumulates, the more they'll have tiered pricing. So the more volume, the lower the price goes down for everybody. So it incentivizes everybody to buy more. It's like the craps table in Vegas. <laughs> Every, when one yeah, wins, wins, everyone wins. Right? Yeah, I love wow. it. I love it. Wow. Exactly. All right. So since since so, since you're in the fruit industry, sustainability is always a big topic. We hear that at every conference we go to, um, and you've done a lot of work on the regenerative agriculture side of things. So what do you think the opportunities are there in terms of, or what are, what opportunities are there out there in sustainability and regenerative agriculture in particular? Absolutely. I think, um, well, opportunities with regenerative are. They're endless, eh? But okay. a, the difficult piece, I believe, with that is is bringing it to retail. So okay. from what mm. CMI is doing on our side, we are we position ourselves as kind of the sustainability leaders in the industry. And how we're doing that is through we have a regenerative cattle ranch that's part of our family. Um, mm. That sounds funny coming from an apple pear and cherry shipper. That's a whole other story. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was that, okay. But, yeah, um, it's actually a carbon negative cattle ranch. Um, with w within that also, we have created another company called so the Soil Center, and that is creating um, different soil amendments mm. that we're using with byproducts from the, from 
both the orchard and the cattle ranch and create and um, those soil amendments go out back into the orchard um, kind of completes a life cycle so um, with that with CMI we have a, a no burn commitment so naturally when trees reach the end of their life cycle natural process is to burn trees right yeah. get rid of them well when you burn trees you're emitting all of that carbon that those trees have captured for the 30 years of your life you're putting it right back up into the air so what we're doing and this is just a piece of our regenerative process is we're we're chipping those trees mm -hmm. creating the wood chips and then those are getting processed through we have worm beds hmm. which are the largest worm beds in the world okay we have eight acres of them so that's the wor wood chips are the medium in the worm beds and um anyway so the worms eat those wood chips and the byproduct is worm castings hmm. worm poop yeah <laughs> okay so which is <laughs> put it bluntly yes. pretty much the most valuable so soil amendment in the world really oh. and then on the other side of that too we use biochar ovens so that's another way we um we take those wood chips we'll burn them in the, the biochar and that creates another extremely valuable soil amendment so in essence what we're doing is we're taking those trees instead of burning or releasing carbon we're putting it back into the soil where it belongs and so with that right now we've we found out through all of our regenerative processes between the ranch as well as a uh, soil center we're sequestering enough carbon to take about 60,000 cars off the road each year oh my god so wow. it's impressive so we are the first ones to say that, uh, we grow carbon negative fruit Okay. Oh, which wow. is which is fun thing to say because yeah. now you could say every apple that we're growing and what you're eating, we're helping make the world a better place. Yeah. So So it pays so to be negative. It it does pay to be negative. It's All funny, right. it's kind of yeah. a you know, different way of saying it. But yeah. I guess back to your question, what are the opportunities? Well, how do we take that and bring it to market? Right. So what we found right now too, the obvious way is with packaging. Okay. How do we package that? How do we show it? How do we how do we educate the consumer that by buying and eating these apples you're making the world a better place that's an easy way um, a more difficult way is um, is for companies such as Spartan to purchase uh, carbon insets okay a carbon inset is basically a carbon credit right okay so we are generating carbon credits but being carbon negative but an inset is investing within the product stream okay if you will so they're investing in what they are selling um, so it's called an inset and those are more valuable okay so. Got it. great and wow great overview man thanks Lauren yeah. you you talked about a lot there I do you feel like in your role as VP of strategy do you feel like the things you just talked about being carbon negative mm -hmm. um, do you think that's what really sets you apart or as a as a fruit producer <laughs> What, how do you differentiate yourselves outside of maybe that sustainability uh, Absolutely. Angle? That is most definitely, I would say, our the biggest piece of what sets CMI okay. apart. And, you know, aside from that, uh, we've always positioned ourselves as, as the brand leaders. Okay. I just mentioned to you before about the different apples and mm -hmm. pears that we do and cherries right. that we market. Right. They're um, specialty varieties. So um, we've always had more branded or specialty apple and pear and cherry varieties than any other shipper. So we set ourselves apart that way, and then also with organics as well. So, okay. so um, we're probably the largest organic shipper in in um, in the U.S. So, okay. so Lauren, I'm curious too. Like, what we we talk a lot about technology on this show across the industry and all the people you know that play into it. Mm -hmm. What in in your job heading up strategy? What role does technology particularly play in on the strategic planning side of things yeah. for you? Well, obviously, we're on the marketing and sales side of things, so. Okay. And, you know, technology, what we see is going to take more, take place more on the warehousing side, right? Okay. Which we are tied into. Um, I guess from what we are using, um, you know, we're constantly trying to look into data and research data from a, from a sales perspective. Um, and then leverage that, use that with, with our retail partners to, um, to be more efficient and right. to help drive sales. So on the production side, uh, we're seeing, you know, continual improvements with, Robotics, um, AI, AI. Mm -hmm. is, I mean, everybody's talking about AI now, yeah. and and um, it's being used on the production side as well. Especially, I gotta imagine, yeah. Um, especially for like sorting machines. Okay. So when you're when you're packing and sorting 
cherries and apples, for example, that go through camera banks. Well, the AI technology will, will learn from itself, and so it's, it's continually improving to detect internal defects and micro defects that aren't visible, visible to yeah. the normal okay. eye. So, um, so constantly improving the packs that we are putting out and sending into retail. So Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, what else should we be looking forward to? What other innovations will there be in apples, pears, and cherries in the course <laughs> of the next couple of months and year? Absolutely. So, again, we talked about branded varieties and being the brand yep. leaders. We have a new apple that will be coming out oh here God. probably in about two, probably maybe not this season, but next season. We'll see okay. it. Um, it's called yellow. And guess what color it is? Just yellow? <laughs> it's a Y-E-L-L-O. Okay. And, uh, okay. And it originated from Japan. And, oh. um, and what it is is, you know, there's a sea of red apples out there, right? Yes. And so we – Yeah. We're constantly getting, hmm. you know, questions from retailers. How do we, how do we put in a color break? How do we, how do we do something different? And yeah, so how do we make it pop. Exactly. So the yellow is an apple that is obviously yellow, but it's clean in appearance. Um, doesn't have a lot of that russety brown on sure. there. Um, it's very sweet. It's very crunchy, um, and it stores well through the season. So, um, so who, we're. Who would have thought that that like grocers asking for pops of color would impact what kind of fruit we're eating and buying but i suppose that that's the business hey the end consumer is the one that uh yeah. tells us what we're gonna grow and how we make money so so do are you accepting like do you have a suggestion box from our listeners who are like i would like to have um a I don't know, purple apple or purple pear. You, do you take <laughs> we, any recommendations? Well, that's the that's the the running joke is we always say we're uh, we're looking for the blue apple. You're looking for the blue apple because we're looking for something yeah. different. Right. Right? Okay. So. You, you always ask people how do you like them apples, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably it. So yes, all right, <laughs> all right. And on that note, let's take it home. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much to Simbi and Spartan Ash again for having us here today. Thanks to all of you for following along. We still have a couple more interviews coming your way. So until then, be careful out there.